Keyboard shortcuts. Most of you probably use them every day. They're extremely useful time-saving tools and one thing's for sure. Once you've started using them, you just can't do without them. Hi, it's Leo from the TechMaker channel. And today I'm going to try and teach you a few of them, but please note that I'm not talking about the old Control c Control v law, but rather some lesser known but just as useful shortcuts. And sorry for Mac users, but you know the drill, you change Ctrl to CMD and Windows to Apple and there's a chance it'll do the same thing. And there's no better way to start than by talking about the shortcuts that will come in handy at the end of this period of confinement when you're no longer safe from the teacher's or boss's gaze. For example, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Alt plus Tab shortcut, used to navigate from one window to another. Well, if you don't know it, it's a gift. But what I really want to talk about is the Windows plus D shortcut. Thanks to this shortcut, you can simply lower all your windows at once. It's really handy if you've got a lot of things to hide, or if you just want quick access to the desktop. But there's a flaw in all this. If I'm in the teacher's seat, I arrive in front of your computer and see that you're on the desktop, you're going to have to explain to me that you were tidying up the icons. But don't worry, Uncle Leo's here to help. Let's take it to the next level with the shortcut Control plus Windows plus D. This shortcut will create a new virtual desktop just as if it were another computer. So you can have one desktop on which you have the serious windows and another on which you have everything else. To navigate between the two, simply use the Control plus Windows keys as well as the left and right arrows, bearing in mind that you're not limited to just two desktops. When you're done with one of these desktops, simply press Control plus Windows plus F4 to close it if that's not wonderful. Now I'm telling you this, but in reality, be serious at school, unless you want to become a future cast member of Les Chetis at Mykonos. Instead, use these shortcuts at home to optimize your work and save time. Staying in the category of shortcuts used to manage windows, I can tell you about the Windows key coupled with the various directional arrows. Thanks to this shortcut, you can, for example, make a window occupy half the screen by using the left and right arrows, which is very useful for multitasking. If you have several screens, then when the window has been placed, say, on the right of the central screen, use this shortcut again to move it to the next screen. As for the up and down arrows, in the first case, they allow you to enlarge the current window and in the second to reduce it. I mentioned the Alt plus Tab shortcut earlier, but have you ever heard of the Windows plus Tab shortcut? I use it absolutely every day and it actually displays all the applications open on the screen and the big advantage over a simple Alt plus Tab is that it separates applications according to the screen on which they're open. If you have several screens, you'll see a summary of all the windows normally displayed on each screen. This avoids having 36,000 applications all in one place and makes it easier to find your way around. Well, we've talked enough about window management for now, so let's move on to the next category. Screenshots. I don't think I'm telling you anything new when I say that. When you press the print screen button, a screenshot is taken and stored on the clipboard. You can then open a program like Paint to paste it in and save it, it's very practical to be able to do this, but it's clearly not optimal in terms of ergonomics. Fortunately, I'm going to teach you a few tricks today, which will surely come in handy in many cases. The first of these shortcuts will come in very handy if you want to take a screenshot of a particular window and not the rest of your screen. It's a real pain to have to take a screenshot of the whole screen, then crop and save the image. The solution is simply to press the Alt key at the same time as the Print Screen key. This shortcut will take a screenshot of the current window. All you have to do then is Paste this image wherever you like, in a Word file or even directly onto Messenger, for example. That's great. But what if I only want to capture part of the current window? Are we back to the same point as before? Having to take the screenshot and then open it in an image editing program to crop it and then move on to the next thing? Once again, there's a solution. The first thing many people know how to do is to open the Windows Screenshot tool. You can either retrieve it via the Start menu or just create a shortcut in the taskbar. Today, however, I'm going to offer you an even simpler and faster solution. The shortcut Windows plus Shift plus S. This shortcut opens the screen capture tool directly, so you can immediately frame the capture with your mouse, and you can even open it later by clicking on the notification that's about to open to add an arrow, for example, or circle an element in the image. Once these modifications have been made without clicking anywhere, the modified image is automatically saved to the clipboard. You can then paste it wherever you like on a program or messenger, for example. I can tell you that when I discovered this one, it changed my life. One last word on screenshots. If you take Windows and print screenshots at the same time, this will save the screenshot directly to a file in your computer's image folder. This can be handy if you've got a lot of screenshots to take and save, although unfortunately, you'll have to crop them later. No, I'm just kidding. I lied to you when I said this was the last shortcut. 
In fact, you can press Windows Plus Alt Plus print screen and it will automatically save a capture of the current window. I think this one was originally designed for the gaming part of Windows to make screenshots in-game, but in the end it works very well for any window. The only difference is that for some reason that escapes me a little. These screenshots, which are therefore images, are stored in your computer's video capture folder. Don't ask me why, it's not to me, is it? Well, that's it for screenshots, so let's get on with it. You're probably all familiar with the shortcut, Ctrl plus Alt plus Delete, which, among other things, gives you access to the Windows Task Manager. The problem is, when you use this shortcut, you still have to grab your mouse and click on the Open Task Manager button. Okay, you don't really have to use the mouse. You can have fun pressing the down arrow several times to get to the button and then pressing Enter. But you get my point. It's not practical. If only there were a shortcut to open the Task Manager directly. Well, as some people have said in the past, I get your point. Press Carl plus Shift plus Esk at the same time and it'll open the Task Manager directly. By the way, if you're on Google Chrome, you can also open the browser's Task Manager by pressing Shift and Esk at the same time, which will allow you to see which tab or even which extension is consuming CPU or RAM resources. That's the beauty of technology. Speaking of Google Chrome, I've got a few shortcuts for you here too. Let's say you're searching for something on Lebencoin, for example. Once you've launched your search, you don't want to have to leave the page every time you want to see the details of one of the results. The solution is, of course, to open these results in a new tab. And there are several ways of doing this. The least convenient is to right-click on the link and then click on Open in a new tab. The problem is that this requires two clicks. And on top of that, you have to aim at the right button. In other words, it takes too long. But oh, we've got other things to do. The solution is either to use the Carl key at the same time as clicking on the link or to press Press directly on the link with a wheel click rather than a left click. And if you don't have a wheel click, well, I don't know how you've made it this far. And you can even open the link in a new page if you like. To do that, instead of using the Carl key at the same time as clicking, use the shift key. Now let's move on to the shortcut, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And don't try to pretend you're not. El famoso Cotrol plus shift plus N. As we all know, this opens a private browser window. The thing is, Sometimes you'd like to be able to open a link in a private browser window from a regular window. Let's say you're on YouTube and a cat video comes up in the suggestions. You'd like to see this video. But you know that if you click on it, YouTube will understand that you like it and will spend its time suggesting others. The solution could be to copy the link, open a new private browser and paste the link there. But that's a pain. Alternatively, you could right-click on the link and directly click on the Open Link in New Tab in Private Browsing button. But again, you'd have to take the trouble to move your mouse a centimeter to find the button. Unfortunately, there's no official shortcut to do this in the style of Kodo Plus Alt Plus Click. But don't worry, I've got a solution for you. Just right-click on the link, then press the G key. This will actually do the same thing as clicking on the button I mentioned earlier. It's not necessarily ideal, but it works. To stay on the subject of Chrome shortcuts, I can quickly tell you about some of the more familiar ones, such as Carl plus W, which is used to close the current tab, or Carl plus tab, and Carl plus shift plus tab, which are used to navigate between the various open tabs. But do you know the ultimate shortcut for reopening an accidentally closed page? Surely you don't need to go into the history to find the address of the page you've just closed, do you? It's 2020? Right then. Already, if you need to do that, the shortcut Ctrl plus H opens the history. But that's not what we're looking for right now. The solution to your problems, Ctrl plus Shift plus T. Whether you've closed a tab or an entire window, this shortcut will bring back your lost pages. And of course, you can do this several times in succession to reopen the various tabs in chronological order from the most recent to the oldest. It's a bit like browser Z control. Come on, I've got two more for you on Google Chrome. The first concerns the address bar. We all know that taking the mouse and having to move it to this address bar to enter the name of the site you want to access is a pain. We're confined to our homes at the moment. We don't do sports all day, so we don't have to kill ourselves moving a mouse around all day. Don't worry. Once again, Uncle Leo is here to save you. Just press Coral plus L and your cursor will automatically be placed in the address bar. For the last one, let's stick to the idea of not getting tired. You're probably familiar with the F5 shortcut for reloading a page. Well, I've got a shortcut for that. Well, the F5 key is way up on the keyboard. So when I need to reload a page, I press Ctrl plus R. That lets me reload a page without having to move my hand too far up on the keyboard. Honestly, what a beautiful world we live in these days. Come on, I think that's enough for Google Chrome. Now let's get back to Windows for the last few shortcuts I wanted to talk to you about. The first is Windows Plus E. 
This shortcut simply opens the file explorer, which is super handy. And what's even more practical is to use software like Clover, which lets you have tabs in your file explorer, just like Google Chrome. So you don't have 36,000 windows scrolling across your desktop. But also to have most of the shortcuts we've just talked about on Chrome on your file explorer, which is also why I talked about it on this video before, people in the comments came up to me and said, yes, but you've talked about Chrome 10 times more often. I'm fed up. Your headlines are crap. Here you go. Finally, let's imagine you're typing an essay for a French paper in Word. You want to add a smiley face for your teacher, but unfortunately you don't know how. We're not going to put in an old smiley with SKI characters. It's not 2019 anymore. The solution is simply to press Windows Plus to open the emoji keyboard. Thanks to this keyboard, you'll be able to insert emojis just about anywhere you can enter text in general. And yes, you have this on your computer, but you've never used it in your life, I'm sure. To finish this video, I'd like to give you one last shortcut to get your computer out of the way. If you press Windows plus X, then the D key, then the A key, it will simply shut down your computer. With all that, I think you're all set to save several seconds a day. And you know what? If I save you even 30 seconds a day, well over a lifetime, say 80 years, that's 10 days saved. And if I save those 10 days of life for each of my 475,000 subscribers, that's the equivalent of saving 13,000 years of life altogether or 162 complete lives of 80 years. Come on, it's a gift, it makes me happy. Or maybe a small subscription, who knows? So don't hesitate to do it, it doesn't cost you that much. What are your favorite shortcuts? Tell me all about it in the comments. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate to leave me a thumbs up to let me know. Come and follow me on the various social networks where I regularly post content between two videos. You can also subscribe to the channel so you won't miss a thing by clicking on the button that appears right here. It was Leo from the Tech Maker channel, and above all, never stop learning. Bye.